Police say Eric Dean and Harold Rawlings robbed two employees who were walking to a nearby bank to make a deposit. Then they took off in a Honda, switched cars to a Chrysler, police say, and were pulled over on Troutbrook Lane. Both Dean and Rollins are in custody tonight, being held on $100,000 bond. New reports show that more and more people are dying from infections they contracted in the hospital. The Chicago Tribune says there are 103,000 deaths linked to hospital germs in the year 2000. That's 13,000 more than the previous year. The investigation also found one of the main causes was hospital staff not washing their hands. Phil Bonafini lost his wife of 50 years after she came down with a staph infection during routine surgery at Bridgeport Hospital. The nurse told me she had an infection. She's got the infection. And she left. Okay. Everything was a secret. Experts say drug-resistant bacteria may also play a big role. Bartenders across Connecticut are studying up on the blood alcohol content now that the drunk driving standard has changed from 0.1 to 0.08. That law, that tough new law, took effect July 1st. We're told the difference between the two standards, the old and the new, is equivalent to one beer, one glass of wine, or one shot of hard liquor. Bartenders are now being trained to detect the difference in their customers. Now an update on those two America West pilots who were arrested for FUI, flying under the influence. Prosecutors are asking that a Florida judge revoke bond for the two men. They say the men went home to Arizona without asking the court's permission. The pilots were arrested July 1st for attempting to fly while they were legally drunk. In Florida, three people are dead tonight after a horrible accident involving a church bus and a semi-trailer. It happened in the Fort Drum area on the Florida Turnpike. The 24-passenger bus had a rear flat tire and was traveling slowly. And that's when it was hit from behind by an 18-wheeler. Police say the truck was traveling within the speed limit. Now an unbelievable story out of Oregon where two adults were arrested for driving to a picnic with four children inside their trunk. There were eight other passengers in this car, and the couple says they put the children in the trunk because they simply ran out of room. Can you believe this? <laughs> this is no. ridiculous. A driver called police after spotting the children in the trunk at the supermarket. The children are okay tonight, but the adults were unable to open the trunk at first because the lock was damaged. I'm sure the adults have a lot of explaining. I bet you they do. Let's find out how the Monday evening commute is moving along tonight. It's a slow go even through Hartford. We have a couple of problems. Denise and Dennis will start off on the eastbound side of I-84. We had an earlier bus fire that continues to take out the right lane. This is out by Robert Street, exit 58 in the East Hartford area. Traffic is stacked up eastbound prior to 46. This and Avenue, you'll notice eastbound away from the camera moving very slowly. 91 southbound jams in from 33 to the interchange. We had an earlier problem just cleared on the ramp 284 east. That was a one car spin out. Northbound just busy up towards the Charter Oak Bridge. And as we head on 91 into New Haven, out of Wallingford, a paving operation wraps up their block new lane and as we move into the merge you'll notice left lane just the stickiest point here northbound side is running smoothly i'm rachel lutzker with the connecticut lottery time saver traffic report tomorrow's classic lotto jackpot is 1.2 million dollars okay thanks rachel welcome back by the way thank you nice to be back it is always good to back come back on vacation isn't it yes yeah sometimes sort of. it's hard to kind <laughs> of especially a day like in. today well, Let's tonight, be honest. Well, welcome back anyway. Tonight, investors are on the on edge after another chaotic day on Wall Street. After the break, we will talk to our stock market analyst, whom we've been seeing quite a lot of these days. He's live in the Trump Newsroom right now, and he'll answer your questions. And there's still time to email us. Just log on to WFSB.com and look for stock market questions. Make sure you fill out your name and town. And new at 6 o'clock, we'll have this report. Historic landmark destroyed by a raging fire. I'm Lou Martinez in Seymour. I'll have the story. And on the eve of his next trip overseas, there are new questions tonight over just how healthy the Pope is to travel. That story straight ahead. You are watching Outness News at 5 o'clock live on Channel 3 as we look out over the city of New Haven tonight. We're covering New Hartford, Guilford, Norwich, and the place you call home to. Dennis and I will be right back. Tonight on Eyewitness News Nightbeat at 11. She was a 16-year-old lifeguard that vanished without a trace. Now, more than two years later, there is still no sign of Molly Bish. It's been two years, and the decision to live is it really still a daily decision for us. Channel 3's Andrew Pergam sits down with Molly's parents to talk about her disappearance, what's being done to find her, and how their crusade is keeping other children safe. Tonight on Eyewitness News Nightbeat at 11, Connecticut's news station. 
Another 90 degree day in July and the humidity is on the way up. Is that going to mean some thunderstorms? We'll have the answer coming up in just a moment. Boy, look at those faces. It tells it all, doesn't it? Grim. Tonight, the closing bell signals another rough and tumble day on Wall Street as the Dow finishes more than 200 points down. With the Dow's low finishes over the last couple of days, many people are frantically wondering if they should buy or sell or how they should continue to invest. Once again, here to answer consumers' questions and to help sort it out is our expert who apparently has nerves of steel, Doug <laughs> Osber, Vice President of Advest. Nice to see you, Doug. Thanks. I refuse to be glum like the rest of them. All right. Always smiling. We like that. Consumer confidence. We have some questions from our viewers. The first, Dorothy Tate of Plantsville, and she wants to know, one of my employees just can't take it anymore. What should she do with the money she's taking out of the market? Well, I guess, you know, it's a question. Everyone has a, a level to which their fear just overcomes them. And if someone's going to become physically sick, they ought to put that money in the money market until they think that uh, their emotions can not get the better of them and they can ease their way back in the market because it's not worth getting sick over. Guess you have to know your limitations. Yes. Now we have a question from Charles Montante of Rocky Hill. It's a little bit complex, so I'll go slowly. Most of my funds are invested in an IRA spread among 12 different funds, both stocks and bonds. I have a small distribution monthly to support my pension and Social Security. Should I be moving my funds to protect my investment or just ride it out? I don't think I know enough about this investor, but I will tell you with 12 separate mutual funds, each invested in probably four or 500 stocks, I would say this investor is over diversified. So that, that person might want to take another look and uh, get involved in enough funds to have diversification, but not too much. And then take a look at risk tolerance and age. I mean, if the age is, if you got plenty of time to retirement, then maybe that's the right thing to do. Take a reasonable distribution and not move a thing. Just too many funds, too many stocks in each fund. There's no way to have good performance with that many mutual funds. This is from Alice Craig in Middletown. She wants to know, in the event that the market gets worse or crashes, how will our Social Security benefits be affected? That's an excellent question. You, yeah. I, you know, Social Security is not accounted for in the market. It's, it's an obligation of the U.S. government, so it's more a question of the U.S. government's guarantee and their obligation to pay those benefits than it has anything to do with the stock market. We have time for one more question, Doug. A lot of people are talking about whether to buy, to sell, to hang in there. And would you say generally, and I know it's tough to generalize, but the age of the investor would certainly be a major factor. Isn't that correct? The age of the investor, their tolerance for risk. And, and you know, something, it's, there's a problem with the market today really based on the psychology. But, you know, at some point, dividends, you know, companies buying their own stock, inside of those companies, insiders buying, those are the issues that are going to make the buyers come back. And it'll happen sooner than later. Okay, good. We heard it here first from Doug Osber, Vice President of Advest. Thanks again for sharing your time with us tonight. Well, tonight, Justice Department officials say they want an independent examiner to investigate the WorldCom bankruptcy case. Last night, WorldCom filed the largest bankruptcy case in corporate history. The agency would head a probe into the company's downfall for possible mismanagement irregularities as well as fraud. Now, WorldCom's bankruptcy filing could mean some changes ahead for MCI customers. Here with the impact on phone and internet customers is 3 News side reporter Deborah Kent. Well, the customers will certainly fare better than the stockholders who may see their entire holdings wiped out. This bankruptcy protection actually gives WorldCom some breathing room and new financing to keep things going going. The 20 million customers still will be connected by phone and internet without interruption. Now, MCI might like to raise rates, but it'll face stiff competition from other companies who would vie for their customers. Expect some offers from other phone companies. But with layoffs of 17,000 employees, some warn that customer service may suffer. The car rental company that tracked its customers and fined them for speeding took in more than $22,000 in such fines. The Attorney General's office says recent court filings by Acme Rent-A-Car show 76 customers could be due refunds if the state wins its case. The New Haven company used GPS systems to detect the speeding and in many cases automatically withdrew the money from accounts even before the car was returned. The state, the state ruled the practice illegal. The company is appealing. 
Warnings tonight from credit counselors concerned that these record low mortgage rates could entice home buyers and owners to get in over their heads. Home prices have continued to re increase, but that can reverse, as we saw in the late 80s, leaving home, uh, home buyers with homes worth less than their mortgage. Also keep in mind the rates on home equity lines aren't locked in. When interest rates rise, as they eventually will, those payments will take more out of your budget. In half an hour, a story you will see only on three, as a woman finds she's not protected by her extended warranty, her heartbreaking ordeal, and what you need to know before you sign on the dotted line at 530. All right, we'll see you then.